with them, I do kind of get the sense it, it could continue. Um, and if I was looking for an upset, that's probably where I would go, actually. What's going on, everyone? The Bear Chris Felica back at Bear Bits Podcast here to preview the Euro and Copa quarterfinal matches. We uh, we know all four quarterfinal matches in both uh, Euro and Copa, so we'll uh, we'll kick it off with uh, with Euro. And here to help me do so is my friend and Fox host Rob Stone. Uh, Rob, the, the, the Euro has been really it's been great, but it's disappointing in a sense that on the one side you do it well, it, it's good and bad. You've got you've got Germany, Spain. You've got France, Portugal. You've got the four heavyweights there on that one side. It's disappointing that these matches worthy of a final all have to take place in the quarterfinal. But at the same time, the fact that you've got these two monster games on Friday is really really good. Hey, at least you got them right. I mean, you know, as as we've learned through the course of these tournaments, no games are guaranteed. No, you know, marquee headline matchups. Uh, uh, work out the way you think about it. So at least let's let's let them play and and let them fight it and let them earn it. And you're right, they are they are sexy games, man. They're great great nations, entertaining soccer. It's been it's been a fun little summer. I know you haven't been getting much sleep. I see you hanging out in the avocado room. I'm like, hang in there, bear. <laughs> hang in there. We only got another game from Copa America come your way. Um, but it's been a fun tournament if you're a soccer junkie. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll sleep when the tournament's over before we exactly. get going there with, with Big Dewey kickoff uh, at the end of August for West Virginia. So wait, we're not talking Penn State at West Virginia, right? No, we're, we're, we're not talking okay. James Franklin uh, job okay. status. Is, can Drew Aller make that leap? We're not talking that here. We'll, we'll, do, we'll do that in a couple of weeks. Okay. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll kick it off with, uh, with the first game Friday, Spain-Germany. Uh, basically, Spain minus 115 to advance, Germany minus 110. Uh, this feels like a match where the winner may win it. You probably have player of the tournament here at stake with, with either Rodri or Ruiz or Yamal for Spain, Musiala Cruz for, for, for Germany. Uh, this is a Spanish side of which has looked like the best uh, team in the tournament so far. They've conceded multiple goals just twice in the, in the last year and a half. Um, I like Spain to advance. That's my bet here. Spain minus 115. They're, they're, they were my pick when we did our little uh, our, our little sheet there in the uh, in the avocado room. But um, it, it, it's probably – it's going to be a tough ask with the home crowd being all over Germany. But I do like Spain to advance here. I think they're yeah, overall they're the better team. That's the thing. Like, you know, how much do you factor in for home field advantage? Um, and I think you could say the same for Turkey as well when we get to that point a little bit later. And, um, you know, having this ground swell – of of emotion and, and energy from the home country from the host country it's incredibly valuable um and it you're almost like master of the obvious when you say it but you still feel like you need to remind people i mean we go back to 1994 and look what the u.s did on on home soil you know when you get that whole country behind you and the energy that is there and you know, germany's had a rough go of things national team wise as of late and they needed something positive and and now they got some dude in the, the middle of every square in Germany blaring that saxophone and, and everybody's going. Um, I kind of like Germany to keep it going. I think they I think that might be the end of the road, you know, because you can only tap into that vein so often and, and it's gonna gonna give you another pint of blood. But um, as well as Spain has played, somehow I think this this home field energy just pushes Germany over the finish line one more time. Have we confirmed that the uh, saxophone player is not uh, Landon Donovan or uh, Ian Dark? Can we confirm that? It's a bit, he's got like, is it, is it me or does he have like a cigarette behind his ear as well, which is part <laughs> of like this amazing decor? Um, and I'm a big Yacht Rock guy. So yes. saxophone is always in Yacht Rock. So, I'm, so there's like this natural bond between me and this saxophone dude. Um, and he's he's banging out songs that I dig as well. It's such a cool, cool thing. And, you know, it's funny. It's funny. That whole, I can't believe we're talking about a, a German guy playing a saxophone right now. Um, <laughs> but uh, it, it has me thinking about World Cup 26 and everything that we're doing this summer is kind of, you know, gearing towards, you know, Canada, U.S., Mexico hosting World Cup. And I hope I see these scenes, you know, in, in the United States. It's just it, it's hard to imagine in some of these places because the stadiums are, are not so close to the city centers, if you will, and, and the 
the public transportation to get there isn't like it is in, in Europe. Um, I don't know if we're going to get those scenes in the United States, but you know, like the German saxophone dude taking over Times Square in 2026, <laughs> that is, that would probably make me the happiest man on earth. Can we, can we agree that Michael McDonald is the official vocalist oh. of Yacht Rock? Michael McDonald. It, do you remember the old SCTV skit? Oh yeah, this is going way way back mm-hmm. where they're do, they're banging out. I can't remember if it was like a Kenny Loggins or it was some like yacht rock song. And it's all it is is following Michael McDonald through the course <laughs> of the day while the recording's going on, and he comes running in the studio to sing his little line, and then out of the studio he goes. Yeah, See, that, Michael that's, McDonald is that's a the great thing because he got him with the Doobie Brothers, and then like he has all these little cameos with other artists, which makes it so fantastic. You're like, oh, there's a sneak little Michael McDonald appearance. Yeah. Now. Look. Uh, so Alexi Lawless and I, we drive into work together um, quite often and we're both kind of music nerds and we both like we both really like heavy metal stuff. Like mm-hmm. like when Def Leppard comes on, it's like turn it up to 11. Um, but Yacht Rock will come on and we both just, you know, it's kind of like you look at each other. And we're like, yeah, we're going to keep it here. And we always start doing some weird deep dives on these Yacht Rock bands and these artists like, who is this guy? What are they? Where do they come from? And I guarantee you, every time we drive, I'm like, is that? Did I just hear Michael McDonald? And they're like, I think that it was Michael McDonald. Like, I didn't even know he was in that song, too. Wow, German saxophone and yacht rock. We have gone off the rails. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We so I'll, I'll try and take take it back on the rails here. Uh, I, was look, I was looking at player of the tournament odds today, and if Germany were to win, uh, I think – it's probably a two-man vote between Musiala and Tony Kroos. Like, do you think because of this being deemed as a Tony Kroos farewell tour, that even though Musiala has been fantastic and had been such so involved in all these goals, do you think this might be a default? We'll give Musiala outstanding young player of the tournament and give Kroos player of the tournament. I mean, it, it's hard to do because Musiala has been so good, but I kind of sense that this might be one of those like lifetime achievement awards here for Chris. Yeah. Well, it's like those retirement tours, right? You know, like um, the, the voters do kind of hedge their bets sometimes, you know, and, and you're right. It, it does become a bit of a lifetime achievement award, but I think also what Musiala has done has been, you know, so obvious and so blatant that it's hard to, hard to overlook it. Um, but they have an out, as you mentioned, right? Here's the out. You can be, you can be honored. You can be honored. Everybody can be honored. It becomes like an Oprah show. Um, and <laughs> you get a fifth and you get yes. a gift and you get so, yeah I, I i as someone who has a musiala ticket i'm hoping that's not the case but i'm uh i'm fearing i'm fearing the worst so how uh, many tickets do you have right lot. now for your a lot i a lot, I, a lot. Like, I, I, have, I don't know what a lot is is a lot well, 50 100 200 um let's i have let's let's, let's see I, I can quickly uh six ten 15, 25. I got about 30 different things that involve like name the finalists, golden okay. boot, player of the tournament, uh, assists, uh, outright wins. So yeah, they're, they're about 20, 25 different, different permutations. What about, what about for the Copa? Copa, I don't have as many. Okay. Uh, Copa, I would say, let's see, three, five. This is this is great, by the way, people. I only, I only have I only have seven. For, Should we talk uh, about our fantasy football teams next? Uh, we we could do that if if you'd like. The, no, the, no. The, the one Copa bet that I, that I made that I found, and it, it was ridiculous. Was that there you could you could bet you'd have to lay a big number that there would be no first time winner. Uh, Yes or yes or no? Would there be a first time winner in Copa? And like the no was not best bet, bet uh, priced accordingly. Like I'm like one of these top four choices are going to win for like, sure. We're not going to have a first time winner. So like that was that, that was one of those lay a lot to win a little type bets. But yeah, uh, I, I, feel, I feel good about that. One. So you don't believe in Panama? That's what you're telling me. I, I, I do not believe I do not believe in Panama. And unfortunately, getting the uh, the three wins necessary to complete this this magical <laughs> run. Uh, steering it back to uh to Euro, we, we really circumvented. We went like the the Big Ben Parliament way around the loop there. Uh, the the other match on Friday, uh, Portugal France uh, France minus one forty five to advance. Portugal plus one fifteen. 
this one has under for me written all over it. If you look at France, uh, five of their last seven Euro matches have ended in a draw. They've kept clean sheets five of their last six. Uh, Portugal hasn't scored in 210 minutes since putting three on the board against Turkey. Uh, France has only got the two on goals and the Mbappe kicked from the spot. Uh, Rabio being out, I wonder if that might change the dynamic a little bit. You bring Kamavinga in now, I would assume. But it, it just seems like, and I was joking in the in the room the other day with, with, with Jules and, and Peter and uh, <clears throat> and Daniel in there, like this is like every single Deschamps knockout match round uh, game. It, it looks it look it looked like the match was right there, right there for for for, for France to be had and beaten. And there they go. Ball goes off a defender, own goal. They win one nil. So I'm going to play one nil France. I'm going to play two nil France uh, as my bet here. Uh, I just wonder if Portugal's kind of been figured out because I know the one match uh, where they did lose to Georgia, they they didn't have their what they had ten subs in that game. But the match before that, and then the match uh, in in the knockout round where they were fortunate to get by as well. I think they're run ends here. I'm going to go one nil France, two nil France at a price. So you're, you're telling me France is like Rasputin right now. You, you can't kill them. <laughs> you can't get rid of them. Um, I see both of those nations as slightly underachieving. And I think France more like major underachieving so far. Um, you know, Ronaldo, his struggles, and then the emotion we saw from him when he missed that penalty kick in the last round that would have won it for them um, eventually he did step up when it went to penalty kicks and converted a beautiful finish. But, you know, I wonder where his, his head is right now because he knows it's kind of last call, certainly last call at the Euros. Hopefully we get him in two more years at the world cup. But um, I think he's feeling, feeling some pressure, feeling, you know, like the story is starting to come to a close and, and it's impacting him. And I don't know, that could be a positive or a negative. I, I don't know where he's going to go with that. Typically, I think it's a positive, but like for him to to be on the field like sobbing, not just like kind of bummed and mad, but broken down, like a broken down human being, um, alarmed me. Um, it also showed he's human, by the way. You know, those abs are, are actually created. Um, and France, you just keep expecting more from them. You know, they're they're a brand. Right. It's kind of like Brazil, the Copa, when we get there, they're a brand. And you're like, well, just because they've done this, this and this, they're still France. They're going to be better. They're going to show the real France eventually. And Mbappe is going to have that game where you're like, oh, yeah, that's right. He is the best player on the planet right now. So I, I like the slow burn method at these tournaments, at a World Cup, at a Euro um, and I think for France, it has been a slow burn, but I think it's time to ignite. And I, I think they do come alive. I don't think this one is is as low scoring as you think. I think okay. both teams come out flying, and I think it's an early goal that kind of sets that tone. Well, that would be great. We, we, I, I'd be all for that just to get a little yeah. excited. You, you, you want slow burn, a, a perfect segue to England, uh, who are – I was shocked when I saw this line, England – uh, minus 175 to advance Switzerland, plus 135. Like, there has been nothing in this tournament so far yeah. to suggest that England are better than Switzerland. Uh, you look in an English side with average three shots on target in in the game. Uh, they, they don't have Gahey, who's probably been the only decision that Southgate got right uh, in, in the back line to, to so far in the tournament. did get the the, the, the subs right in, in, the, in the comeback win against Slovenia. But I, I just look at this. I, I think he needs to reassess his lineup here. Uh, you'll 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 look at was it Slovenia or Slovakia? I'm I'm, I'm getting my Slovakia right. Your slow's messed up. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. He was he was Slovakia. Slovenia. Slovenia with Sesko who who missed the uh, the, the 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 sitter uh, against Portugal. So I, I apologize. I do know my geography. I was a history major in college, so please forgive me. But uh, I think uh, Southgate needs to take a look at. Uh, the lineup and like they were so much better when they took Saka, uh, Foden, Walker off. I, I think he's got to play Trent. I think he's got to play Gordon. I think he's got to play Palmer. Uh, they looked so much more desperate and energetic when those guys were in there. And then Tony coming in with the, with the header to set up the winner. Like 
I'm playing Switzerland to advance. Again, I, I know that at some point here, you, you, you talk about brands like you in the slow burn, like you expect England, the brand yeah. uh, to, to turn it on. I worry it could happen here, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go down with, with what I think have been the better side so far. I'm going to take Switzerland I, plus 135. I, I think a lot of people would look at that matchup and, and a gut reaction would just be to look at those brands, right? England, Switzerland. Switzerland is like that team that always kind of gets – to the round of 16, maybe they're lucky they can get to a quarterfinal big term, but, but then you're like, time has been done. We appreciate, we appreciate your effort. You guys are outstanding human beings, but you know, it's time for somebody else to come on. And I think when you look at England, Switzerland, you're saying the same thing, like, thank you, Switzerland. Um, we appreciate your stay, but time for you to move on and time for England to wake up. But um, in that brand conversation, you know, like I have faith that France is going to bounce back. I don't have that faith that England is going to do it. Um, uh, I think they've been overrated for years, frankly, and I'm not fully sure how they've been getting these results. And But there's an art to that, right? There's an art to moving on at these tournaments, and they are figuring it out. You know, whether it's a Jude Bellingham bike in deep in stoppage time or whatever it is, they are figuring out. So I have to give them credit for that. Um, I think it's another narrow escape for England. I think somehow they decide to start a game a little bit stronger, finally, um, because they've been saving it for late. I don't have a lot of faith in them. You know, like Switzerland beating them does, would not surprise me or phase me in the least. But I do think England um, sets their alarm clock a little bit earlier than they have been through the course of this tournament. And they play with a little bit more energy from the get go. Yeah, there's this little part of me inside of and I jokingly tweeted it the other day. Like I just, I just fear we're headed towards an England, France, nil, nil, 90 minute slog um, on, on July 14th, which of course. Don't would be say great. it. Don't say don't it. Say it. Don't say it. <laughs> I, I already did. I'm sorry. But I mean, <laughs> two great names, great players all over the place. Great stories, great ratings, great everything. But yeah. Programming will take England all day, all day. <laughs> Give us, give us a little Argentina, France again. Something high energy, exciting, or, or give us, give us, give us Turkey, Austria. That we, which we, which again, was yeah, yeah. Let's do the rematch, right? Let's reboot it. And we we may get something like that with uh, with Turkey and Netherlands in the uh, in the final quarterfinal. It feel it does feel like though. Uh, you talk about the clock ticking on certain teams. It feels like the clock is kind of ticking on Turkey. They got some unbelievable saves and got some unbelievable luck in getting a couple of goals from Demoral in, in that match uh, to, to move past Austria. But you look at this is a team that they've conceded in every match. They've also seen matches go over three goals. So you've seen high scoring, exciting back and forth type games. But I think here uh, the, the Dutch were inside that getting third place in that group really benefited them because they got the easy match against Romania. And now you fall into a match where you're another massive favorite against Turkey and you should win. And then you get the survivor from the bottom side, uh, whether that is England or whether uh, that is Switzerland. But yeah, I, I like, I like the Dutch here. I like their team total over one and a half. I like Cody Gakbo to score uh, anytime. Like he has to be the, the the legitimate favorite now to win the boot. He's sitting on three and he's in a match here where he's probably going to get one more and then he's going to get another game. So I think if you're holding a Gakpo golden boot ticket, you're probably feeling pretty good about yourself right now. Yeah, not bad call. You know, Turkey a is the Morocco of the 2022 World Cup, right? That fantastic run kind of in their region, if you will, um, making it to the semifinals. And Turkey a is 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 like the number two home team, right? At the Euros, you could even make a case. Sometimes they might be the home team with the fan support they've had. Um, and that matters, you know, that that has really pushed them deep. I feel like if they can keep this one close into the halftime locker room, like 0-0 or 1-1, that Turkey is gonna be really, really tough because they just have a different mentality, a uh, different DNA in, in how they go. and. It is probably easy to say, okay, your time is up because you had these saves and you had these goals and you had these magic moments and we're applauding you. Um, there's no way that could continue. With them, I do kind of get the sense it, it could continue. Um, and if I was looking for an upset, that's probably where I would go, actually. It's interesting because you go, you go back and get, what was it, 
15 years ago when Soccernomics was written about how like Turkey was going to be this the great next power because of the all of the pop, the, the, the socioeconomics and the population. And yeah. uh, they were of everyone's dark horse at Euro 2020 and they went out with a whimper didn't score and were just terrible. So uh, it's kind of it's kind of cool to see that now three years later after being a massive flop when people thought they were going to break through. And you see that you see that a lot in international soccer, whether it's a World Cup or the Euros. You know, you, the expectations they don't meet it, but in four years or two years time, they do. You know, get that upturn because it's it's not club soccer, right? It's it's a bunch of you know you're you're relying on a generation of talent, and you know, and are, are these dudes born kind of in the same window, and do they coalesce at the right time? And um, I think maybe we were a lot of people were a little premature on the turkey. Um, but now is the time where it feels like they're growing up on this stage and, and they're ready to to kind of leave their mark. And I think, you know, however far they go this tournament, I think we're going to start looking at Turkey differently going forward from this point on. You know, when the World Cup is happening in 2026, we're not going to be like, maybe Turkey will get out of the group. We're going to say Turkey is going to get out of the group and they're going to win one or maybe two or maybe even three games at the next World Cup. I think that's the direction we're heading with this program. Well, certainly they have uh, the youth there on that on that side to uh, continue moving forwards. Uh, a team that youth, veterans, success, uh, everything over on uh, segueing over to Copa America, Argentina, uh, defending World Cup champion. They're a massive favorite to advance against Ecuador. Lutero Martinez, the boot leader there with four goals. Uh, they have not conceded yet. And, and I find it hard to think that they're going to concede on Thursday against Ecuador either. I agree. Ecuador, by the way, like sneaky good. They might be having one of the best generations that they've ever had as well. Um, if 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 Ecuador's matched up against maybe a couple other teams, I would be leaning towards Ecuador. But it's Argentina. A, you just say it's Argentina. Um, you have Messi, who has been rested, you know, and he was rested because of – I think it's a little bit more man management, but obviously he was – he was impacted by something in that second game. You know, we saw the visuals of the, the physio out there getting really high up into the groin area and, and sorting things out in the thigh area. Uh, but I think every time I look at the schedule, I'm like, oh, Argentina still has another day off. Oh, they're still like to me, they strike me as a very well rested team uh, that this schedule has totally played out for them. Um, they're going to have it, once they get by Ecuador, you and I both agree they're going to have another they're going to have the longest break mm -hmm. of any of the teams that are still in the quarterfinal. So I think everything is kind of laid out for Argentina to get themselves to the final. And, you know, Messi hasn't scored yet and he has scored in every major tournament that he has played in. So he is he is due much like Ronaldo was due in the Euros. I, I think Messi is due and uh, I think it's going to be a bad day to be Ecuador. Yeah, like, like if you were Ecuador and that's what it goes to show how. 20 minutes into Copa America with the Valencia red card and they wind up losing to Venezuela. Venezuela wins the group, Ecuador finished second. So now you've got to play Argentina uh, instead of being on the, the other side where ultimately Venezuela uh, play Canada. And this, this looks like a, um, a match that has draw in under two and a half written all over it. Uh, Venezuela Soto has been fantastic in goal. Uh, that, that big frame making save after save. Uh, this is a Canadian side that's advanced despite the one goal. Um, the only what, Argentina is the only team, however, to score on them. Um, Venezuela. Solomon, is, Solomon Rondon is a beast up top too. I mean, yeah. he is a he is a lot to handle for Lavino Tinto, and and they're they're kind of they're going through this um, metamorphosis, similar maybe to a Turkey, where they're getting some great. Um, energy and youth and optimism you know they're doing really well in world cup qualifying right now in, in comable and they were gifted this quarterfinal matchup right i mean they earned it they earned it by winning their group and and winning all three games but you know i think you can make an argument that it's kind of a draw between canada and panama that these are the two <laughs> weakest teams in the quarterfinals unfortunately both are from Concacaf. so uh but on the flip side i think canada's like hey man if we're gonna play anybody in the quarters like no 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 I'll take Venezuela. I'll, I'll take our odds with them, right? So I think both of those nations are kind of happy with with the matchup that they have. But in the end, I think Venezuela is, is just too much. Canada has not 
has not shown much to me. You know, they've played almost an entire game with a man advantage. You know, two <laughs> games they've had a man advantage. They've only scored one goal. Tejan Buchanan with um, with an ugly lower leg injury suffered at training the other day. He's been kind of underwhelming, but he's still a big part of their program and certainly appears that he's going to be unavailable. So um, I like I like Venezuela probably by winning by two goals in this one. Yeah, I, I like Venezuela as well here to uh, to advance. And it's interesting, interesting though. But getting back to what you said about Canada, like they'll take their chances because again, they haven't they they don't concede. Venezuela is another team that really doesn't concede. Like you go back over their last seventeen matches, only once they've conceded more than one goal. But they also don't score, so that that's going to leave you open to potentially getting it getting into penalties. And you get into penalties, it's a total crapshoot. The uh, other, the, the the third semi a, a, again. I, I don't think any of us are expecting Panama to get through against Colombia. It was it was surprising surprising yesterday uh, in in the Brazil Colombia match that Brazil were favored in that match. The way the match was priced, even throughout the match going on, like Brazil were still like favored. Brazil or draw was a massive favor, like. Colombia, despite being unbeaten in 26 straight matches, uh, despite Hamas Rodriguez looking like this is eight years ago, despite Colombia scoring in the first half in, in, in six straight matches, despite everything, they still are not getting the the recognition that that I think they deserve. And now you get because you won that group, you get the benefit again of playing Panama in, in the quarters and avoiding Uruguay. So, like, like Colombia to win this thing is a really good bet. And I, I like Columbia minus one and a half here uh, as well in the, in the, in the quarterfinal. I think that one went back to the brand conversation. You know, the brand of Brazil is so strong and so powerful. And, and, you know, the Colombian head coach, you know, admitted it prior to the game, you know, like you are never the favorite when you're playing Brazil, right? What, right or wrong. That's just, just the way it is. Let, um, let, let your team hear it. A little psychological advantage. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, and if you're if you're Columbia, Columbia, you're like, oh, you're going to be the underdog again, even though you may be the best team in this tournament. Fine, lean into that, let it go. Um, I really like what Columbia has done throughout the course of the entirety of this tournament. And you're right, Hamas Rodriguez is that left foot is just precision personified. You know, whether it's a shot, whether it's a cross, whether it's a set piece, um, he's been he's been probably the most entertaining player to watch through the course of this tournament and what he's been able to do and the impact that he has had for his nation and, and what it means to him. And it's such a strange story, you know, just bouncing around from club to club to club. But when you watch him on these big international stages representing his country, you know, if, if I'm the technical director, general manager, president of a, of a, of a club, I'm like, he's only 32. Like, <laughs> can we get him at a good little rate? Like I guarantee you there's MLS clubs right now saying, Really? Like, can he, do you think he could do that for us in Minnesota? You know, like, you think he might want to come to Nashville or, you know, insert American city or Canadian city here. Um, he's been a pleasure to watch. I like Columbia. I like Columbia getting to the final. Yeah, I do too. And I think that that will set, uh, I, I think the interesting thing will be who will they play? Will they play Brazil again or will they play Uruguay? And we talked about the brand again, like Brazil, it's like, Brazil are the England of Copa America, like they're favored, but they shouldn't be. No Vinny Jr. and they are favored to advance over Uruguay, who has been fantastic. They got so many weapons offensively. They can defend. They just beat Brazil 2-0 in World Cup qualifying. I I, I don't get it here. I, I like Uruguay to advance here. Again, maybe Rafina will have an unbelievable set piece again. Uh, maybe Allison, Allison will, will stand up again and make some unbelievable saves, but Again, there's nothing that we've seen so far in this tournament now, especially without Vini Jr. for Brazil, to suggest that they should be favored over Uruguay. Yeah, and I want Brazil back. Like, I want to see Brazil yes. be Brazil, right? I think every soccer fan does because it's so entertaining. But through the course of the three games, yeah, I mean, 0-0 with Costa Rica. They had a breakout in game number two, getting four goals. But you're right, even then it just didn't – feel right. And Vinny Jr., you know, I know he's not going to be playing in that quarterfinal. He is underwhelmed. Um, it's it's Alexi has been calling him Brazil light, and, and he's right. You know, they're going through uh, a reboot, if you will. You know, they're, they're trying to figure out what their current identity is with this player pool and trying to bring in young players, and it's going to take time, and I get it. And again, for Brazil, it 
it may be a little bit more with an eye towards 2026, but you know, they're kind of struggling a world cup qualifying right now. They're right there on that line in Kamabo. So they need some energy. They need these big games really to get them ready for qualifying and get ready for 2026. So I'm not a believer in Brazil yet. They just haven't shown me this, this comfortable nature on the ball. Like I remember watching, you know, old videos of Brazil and, they're playing it out of the back back in the day and it's just ding bomb boom 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 and here they are there's nothing nothing like that these days not that they have to be that team anymore but they're just they don't feel brazilian to me and i think the brand of brazil gets bounced by a tremendously rugged tough uh threatening uruguayan side and i i, I think they might even like i think it might even be like a 3-1 type victory two zero three one like i think it's going to be kind of comfortable when it's all said and done yeah you, you can get a nice number on that and i, I would like I, I do think we're going to get a lot of goals in this match from, from the uruguay side because brazil just allow so many shots like i'd be looking for a for darwin nunez shot prop uh is well here it's a couple days out so i don't see it yet but uh but i am with you i i think boy again we get you get uruguay colombia in the in the semifinal. that's another like we were talking about the the one side of the Euro bracket being worthy of a final like that is that is worthy of a final right there and then the winner of course would uh, meet Argentina who is on the, the the weaker side of that of that draw as well so uh, Rob we're gonna let you go I appreciate the uh, the time dropping in breaking these eight matches down with this we'll, uh, we'll 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 kick this around some more with our friends in the uh, in the avocado room as we get used to the uh, as, as we get going back here on a Thursday night. But I appreciate oh, no, there's no games. I'm I'm lost right I now. I've got to go hang out with my family and pay bills. I know. I'm I know. I'm actually sitting here on a Wednesday. I'm like, what am I going to do today? And I'm like, going to take like a, a mental health break. I might even break out a uh, a college football magazine or something to oh. sit by the pool, do a little reading, get the highlighter out, and kind of kind of kind of take advantage of a little bit of downtime. So uh, appreciate you, my man. Appreciate everybody out there for uh, for for watching, whether it be on YouTube or downloading wherever you. Uh, get your podcast, continue to rate, review, subscribe, and remember, the less you bet, the more you lose when you win. 